Everybody, how's it going? I come back after three months finally, more than three months maybe, and with a brand new video, as I promised actually in my Easter post, I will try to actually create videos regularly. So this is the first one, as I promised. So I was thinking what would be the kind of a good topic to create for this video, and after a long pause, I decided that why not I talk about my FreeBSD setup. Uh, previously, I've created a video about my OpenBSD setup around a year or so. Nothing much changed about that setup. Uh, FreeBSD more or less also is similar. But in any case, if you haven't watched the OpenBSD setup, you can actually watch it. The link is on the top right corner of this video. So let's get started. Before that, I have to do the NeoFetch so you know that I'm not lying and I'm actually using FreeBSD. Here is FreeBSD 14.0. Just uh, FYI, before creating this video, I had to actually go through my notes and even watch some of my own videos to figure out how I configure things and what I'm using exactly because for a while I took a pause from all this BSD stuff because of the work that I'm doing actually is not supported on any BSD operating system. Instead, I used Linux and I forgot quite a bit about FreeBSD. Nonetheless, here we are. So let's go through the setup it's similar to the uh, openbsd video i create a presentation also so let's talk about that so this uh, setup actually is running on a thinkpad t430 the hardware is for over 10 years ago by now and it's dual booted with the arch linux and freebsd in terms of the specs it's uh, equipped with the core i5 third gen 3320 and it has 12 gig of ram initially it came with the 4 gigs of ram and i found the spare 8 gig years ago and i added to it ideally it should be 16 gig but nonetheless it does the job fantastically so it came with initially with a 500 gigabyte of hard drive it's a western digital blah 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 i don't know exactly the details and later i got the two uh, 250 gigabyte ssd i swapped it and as of like a five or six years ago i decided that i don't use the cd-rom dvd-rom anymore and it was also kind of glitchy so i took it out and here, instead of like the cd-rom i just put the second hard drive bay and moved the 500 gigabytes uh, hard drive there so Arch Linux is completely running off the SSD and FreeBSD actually is completely running on the hard drive. So the spinning hard drive is much slower obviously and many people they have problem with it. For me it's fine. I like the I don't I don't mind actually a bit slower. Matter of fact, I like the retro computing quite a, quite a lot. And actually that's a topic that I will have to create videos about it. I have some stuff to anyway to talk about let's say put it this way so in terms of the gui i, I basically or desktop environment or window manager um uh, using i3 gap and it's also for a status bar it uses the i3 blocks here is the one in one of my videos i mentioned that the i3 blocks is not supported on openbsc is not actually in the port tree uh, a gentleman actually sent me an email with instruction on how to install it. I yet haven't had a time. This one is, I think, for four or five months ago. Unfortunately, I, ha I haven't had a time uh, to go through the installation process myself. And also, I have to actually uh, answer a, a question uh, from that gentleman. So I sincerely apologize in case that he's watching this video. So about the where i search the program of course i use rufi that's a rufi and for a notification default is done uh, similar to anybody who's using the window manager and when it comes to the gui programs again like my setup hasn't changed much uh, compared to the openbsd or linux usually my setups is same across the board everywhere and I'm not like very keen to keep changing things because I'm actually like to get more into the productivity mode rather than experimentations. A lot of people, they do experimentation. That's totally fine. It's just not something for me. And also I think it's kind of like does a bit of harm to the channel in general, because if I was experimenting with things, I could produce more content and would be possibly even more entertaining. But nonetheless, that's not something that I'm interested or have a time for. So in terms of the GUI programs, uh, back to the topic, I use Firefox as my main browser since 
before version 1 i don't remember i think probably since 2003 i've been using firefox if it existed or if not before that it was mozilla something chromium i have to use it unfortunately here uh, for the spotify to listen to music because to to just bypass the drm basically the reason for it is that even though that i have a collection of music and i have my own music server i did a video about it again the link on the top right corner but for some of the songs i have to actually fall back to the spotify because i don't have them on my collections so uh, for the file manager i use pc man fm is the best file manager that i use is very lightweight and i'm sorry i cannot use the terminal based file manager it's just like too much of a hustle and it's just not worth it sometimes i just want to see something and i don't care about whether i'm using gui or no the additional like 5 megabytes or 20 or even 100 megabyte of ram doesn't make me uh, upset uh, in any regards so to record the audio and videos i use obs again by contrast of the OpenBSD, we have OBS actually on the FreeBSD up and running in the port 3, very well functioning fantastically without any problem. For editing the audio, I use Audacity and for editing the videos, I use KDN Live, that's the default one. For viewing the PDF, I use Events and I use Pinto as a simple, let's say, paintbrush program. When I want to cut something, I want to actually re resize the image, etc. For more complicated use cases, I use GIMP. ViewNor is for viewing the image and since I code actually in both uh, Python and Java, I use actually PyCharm and IntelliJ respectively. Also, FreeBSD comes with the uh, VS Code actually in the port tree, so I also have that installed, but I don't use that one much often unless I do some JavaScript programming. Also, there is a Sublime, uh, but that's, avail that's available if you enable the Linux compatibility layer. The reason for it is that Sublime is a closed source program, but it's very fantastic in my opinion. It's unfortunate that it's closed source, but it's free to use more or less. Lastly, also, I use VirtualBox. VirtualBox for virtualization purpose, of course. I don't need to mention that. In the, one of the, my videos related to the FreeBSD that actually setting up the VirtualBox was part of it, Many people commented that actually it's not that simple. It requires a lot of uh, things, more, far more than what I have demonstrated in that video. Uh, but that's not true, actually. VirtualBox works fantastically. Exactly, I followed the same instruction that I actually showed in the video to set up my own VirtualBox. Otherwise, I wouldn't uh, create a video. Create a video for what? Just for no reason? For the terminal programs, I use Bash, and there's no his, uh, reason that I use Bash, it's just for historical reason when I use and uh, start using Linux. I use Bash and I stick to it. I have no intention actually of switching to the ZSH. In terms of the program em emulator, I use Alacrity. Before that, I use Xterm and then Terminator and different other stuff. But since I'm using actually a window manager, I use Alacrity exclusively. It's fantastic. It works uh, well and it does the job as well. Now, let's uh, go through the terminal program. So I use Tmux to split things to actually be more productive in my workflow. Uh, initially, I use, uh, or as of like a two months ago, not initially, as of like two months ago, I was using all my Tmux. But that setup, I just like, got rid of it i think they messed it up a bit it wasn't working fine with my vim key binding and i realized that also it doesn't render all the time there are some bugs with it and to me it's just like too much headache to get through it and i suddenly i uh, i had enough of it and i decided that you know what i'm gonna spend a couple of hours to know more about the customization of tmax and make it one time good customization solid customization for myself that is understandable that is minimal that doesn't require a bunch of like plugins and stuff like that and i came out with what you see on my screen this is my own uh, tmux configuration is a small and uh, even it supports mouse and let me also a bit flex and showcase on it and as you can see including the comments it's just like 66 lines of code or cost, uh, configurations and that's it and it supports actually vim key binding fantastically both in the normal mode and also in the copy or the whatever scrolling mode any and things like that so it works fantastically and also you can just copy the one con simple configuration deploy it to any server or ssh server that you have and then basically you have a tmux 
with the same configuration anywhere without a single plugin so it does the job better than any other configuration that i use of course because i created that one so i have to flex on it so uh, about the vim things are a bit different actually i use quite a bit of plugins there so i use Wandel is a plugin manager but i think it's discontinued if i'm not mistaken however i'm too lazy actually to change it and i use nerd tree this one is for just like a file manager or stuff like that for Veeam. So if I show you, press F2, it shows an R3, F2, it hides an R3 again. Veeam airliner for a status bar. So this is the status bar. It's not rendering fantastically well here, but it does the job. And then also there is a Veeam fugitive for the git branching and stuff that it shows yeah, uh, here also. All right. And then Jedi Vim, this one is for syntax highlighting. It does fantastic with the uh, Python, in case that you code in Python. A markdown just for the uh, markdown highlights, auto close, you just auto close the bracket. And in case that you use a Vim for coding in C, C, you can actually add the Clank complete. And this one does the auto completion for C, C. In terms of the RSS reader, I use News but this is something that I'm actually phasing out and almost actually I phase out because I don't read news or I don't follow our RSS stuff anymore I think it's quite uh, destructive for mine being uh, overloaded by the information and it's just like not something good if there is something important regardless whether there is a politics economy whatever it is or tech even Usually I get the news from a friend or from a family or from something. So as a result of it, I don't need wasting my time reading the news that I cannot do anything about it. I cannot influence it. So why would I care about it in the first place? I use the fuzzy finder and also I built some scripts and programs on top of it. That's fantastic. MDP marked on presentation. This presentation, matter of fact, brought to you by this MDP fantastic application, MPV. No need to explain about it. Pi Radio is the radio program command line base. I have to yet create a, a video or maybe more than one video about it. It's phenomenal. I, I use it to just like listen to the radio streams. FFmpeg, I don't use it much on the FreeBSD because I usually use OBS to record the videos, uh, but on OpenBSD, I use it extensively. So this is the compressed version of what I use and the programs I use and my FreeBSD setup and thanks for watching if you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel have a great time bye I want to thank all of the amazing Patreon and coffee supporters your generosity and support means the world to me and keeps me really motivated to continue creating content Thanks again for your generosity and contribution.